Hey, what's up everybody? It's Lids, and we're back for some more Gwent, and today we're playing the new Battle Rush Seasonal Event, which is an alternate game mode in which we have just 8 seconds to take our turn and 15 seconds to choose our cards in between rounds. That means we need to play Lightning Fast, and today we are using a deck based on cards from the new Claw and Dagger expansion. So let's go take a look at the deck. So today we'll be playing a Skellige Rage of the Sea Weather deck, which is especially good in this event because most of our card's abilities automatically activate either at the end of our turn or the start of our opponent's turn, which means it minimizes the amount of clicks we have to take, which is really good in an event in which we have such limited time. So we have lots of ways to create rain and then other ways to get boosted up from our rain as well, including new cards like Kelpie, which apply rain on our opponent's row depending on how many beasts we have in our starting deck, and we have a lot. So this is going to give us six turns of rain in one of our opponent's rows, which is a lot. Basically, just wait a little bit to see a row in which your opponent plays at least a few units so they can't completely dodge the rain, then play Kelpie. Also, can boost some of your beasts when your opponents take damage from rain, which, because we have so many beasts and so much rain, should be really effective as well. Other than that, we have the Anglerfish, which is another one of the new cards, comes out from our deck automatically whenever we have rain in both of our opponent's rows. So good consistency, which is really good in this event because tutors can be a little bit tough when you have so limited time to choose what card you want to play from your deck. And at, assuming you have both of them in your deck, six points in one turn, summon out from your deck, that is great value as well. Then we also have the Kraken, which is the new legendary Skellige card, which applies three turns of storm in one of your opponent's rows, which is a lot of storm. And then you can move some of your opponent's cards as well into that row to make it so that they're forced to have some cards to take damage from that. Then if you can destroy Kraken, either with the damage from that storm or from some other sources as well, then it comes back to your side of the board, since this is actually the first disloyal Skalga card. And when it comes back to your side, it will get boosted depending on how many different beasts you have on your side, which again, because we have a lot of beasts, should make it very effective. So that's the new stuff. In addition to Melusine for lots of rain and base power, which you can perhaps bring back with Fukusia so that you have a big point slam in a later round. Hermit to help keep Melusine's order ability going because he's a cultist and similar story with the Drum and Berserker. Then you have the Messengers of the Sea who get boosted up from all the rain and storm. And because we have so much of that, these can become absolutely humongous. So that's an incredible card for us. And little Hafru. Another way to get a little more rain, just in case you're lacking some of that. Ryogon is another option for us to bring out from our graveyard with Fukusia. This will immediately apply all the turns of rain and or storm as soon as you play him, which means that if you have 10 turns of rain and there's only one turn left in the game, you can still get the full benefit out of that, so that is really useful at the end of the match. And then there's also the new Sea Serpent, which is another good finisher because it will get boosted based on how many turns of rain slash storm damage you've applied to your opponent in the round and also deal a little bit of damage, which means that it's a good way to get the last few points of damage you need to take out that Kraken we were talking about before. The other good points then we have is the Corrupted Flaminica, who's been reworked a little bit here, but same general idea as it was before, where the more beasts you have in your graveyard now, unique beasts, the more of a boost she'll get, and because we have so many beasts, that means she's a really good point slam in round three. So that's basically what we're going for here. We do also have Nivellin in case our opponent happens to be breaking out Reavers, because that is the state of Gwent. You can never discount the presence of Reavers. But other than that, it's just tons of rain, giving us tons of damage, and with the Messenger of the Sea, tons of boosts as well. So let's go see it in action. All right, so going up against monsters here, and they'll go first. All right, so let's get rid of these Anglerfish. We want to keep those in our deck, and Nivellin's a bit of a brick. That's mostly just here in case of Reavers. As for our plan in this round, not loving what we have. I mean, we can very much go after Yigurn, though, and we probably will. Let's start with the Raging Bear, though. Keep things simple. It's a good first turn play, because it doesn't damage any of our cards in that case. Might use a Drum to Berserker soon. Although that is a decent cultist to put next to Melusine, though we don't have her in this round. Okay, that's unfortunate. Now we have more targets to set up a Seagull, but I'm kind of waiting until there's even more before we do that. Let's, uh, let's throw some rain out there. We'll likely get rid of that drone, but it's in part to weaken up this Yagurn, and also to at least make it a little more feasible, a little more reasonable to use Sea Serpent, since right now that's probably going to be the best way to target Yagurn specifically. That's not great. That's not great, admittedly. All right, so, and now it's gonna be really hard to see Gull. Okay, so I'm, I'm not really liking what I'm seeing right now. And I'm thinking we're probably gonna bail very soon. 
was pretty fortunate the way that Yigurn took the damage from all that stuff, and at this point, a single sea per serpent is almost enough. And certainly, if that hits Yigurn, it, that would help a lot. But at this point, I think we pass. They have a large enough lead. Yes, if we were to destroy Yigurn, maybe we could make it happen, but I think it's just too inefficient at this stage. Okay, now it is very likely that they are going to Osrel to consume that Yigurn. We fortunately did not draw into any cards that we absolutely needed to have in our deck, which I think means we might need to keep this as is. Try getting a little bit greedy here. Messenger of the Sea, definitely a good card to pick up, but we have a lot of stuff that we did not thin out in that round, which makes me a little nervous. Okay, I think we are going to need to rain. Or, yeah. Let's go get a little half route here in anticipation of using rain there. So they're going to want to go wide, obviously. And if we can make that more difficult, that would be great. All right, this is going to be a Kraken, like right now, a Kraken. It would have liked to have had a little more setup before that, but now that makes it very difficult for them to benefit from building in that row. But they will try. They will try. Okay. Now, let's go... Seagull. One, two, three. That'll get some seagulls out. And trying to make it so that when we use Sea Serpent, which is probably the way that we will target Kraken, it is more effective. Chimera is not going to be on a Kraken, of course, which means it should be possible for us to take it out here if we would like to, which maybe we get a Messenger of the Sea out first, because this is a valuable turn of, of Storm. This also gets out both Anglerfish. All right, they're going to boost Kraken. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I was about to destroy it on our next turn, which is... Little unfortunate, but we are still in the lead here, so maybe we go for something relatively small for the time being. Granted, need to get some rain going, otherwise these anglerfish are going to go away. So we need to make sure that that happens right now. And then, might even need to be a Fulmar. Okay, well, the game is not letting me play Fulmar anymore, so we'll see where that ends up going. Do have a large lead, but that was a huge commitment. Didn't really want to have to use that. At this point, Sea Serpent should be pretty effective. And we don't really need to worry about the Anglerfish going back in anymore. Okay, fair enough. I think we probably will be looking at Anglerfish now, though. Should be pretty strong. Boost-wise, you know, not bad. We'd like to wait a little bit longer for them, ideally, but... And again, it was going to be the way that we were going to take out the Kraken, but now we probably are not going to have enough damage to make that happen. All right, so this should be good enough, though. We have one card advantage, because they tried to bleed, and they were not successful. However, we don't have very many strong cards left. Kelpie is huge, though. Let's, uh... That could be really nice with Messenger of the Sea. Let's stump Hermit. Flaminica is huge as well. Okay, so I think let's go... Messenger of the Sea is going to have to go first here. It's a little bit awkward when we don't have the immediate setup because she could very much get destroyed here, but I want to play her and then go ideally Kelpie relatively early. Yeah, that stinks, but there wasn't much way around it. I'm trying to think of who we're going to Fukusia here because I think that is the play, and I think it's probably going to end up being... Uh, perhaps that Messenger, in fact... Yeah, they're going to play in the other row, so we'll use Kelpie there, in all likelihood. Uh, they're going to target Messenger of the Sea with something. Yep, okay, fair enough. Let's break out Kelpie. For that row. They'll get out 
at least one seagull. Hopefully we'll get more in our graveyard soon, and that should be enough to some of the ones that the seagull creates in the first place. Or they'll go with boosting stuff, which makes that a little more difficult to make happen. And we could technically go Flaminica next. Although this is probably still a little more effective. Even if the damage targets are not quite ideal. Alright, Mamuna. Not entirely sure what they're targeting there, but ooh, not great with no Sabbath, of course. Let's do this. Flaminica now gives us one more turn for a stronger Sea Serpent, and that's a pretty big Flaminica at that. So it would take a whole lot for them to catch us. They cannot do so. No need to play that Sea Serpent. We've already won. All right, so going up against Nilfgaard here. And we'll go first. All right, so don't want Angler Fish in hand. Let's get rid of that. Melly's team certainly a nice pickup. Nivellin, mostly a Northern Realms counter. Let's stump you. And then outside of that, we do have a lot of stuff that we don't want to have in our hand in general. We have a lot of stuff that needs to get thinned, so let's play it a little bit safe here. In terms of our first turn play, let's go Little Halfru. And then I'm tempted to use Mask of Ouroboros here, although because we have so many things that we want to thin, it is dangerous if you do that early, because we might be able to get out our Anglerfish early, in which case that removes what would otherwise be a couple of bricks. That's unfortunate. I'd kind of like to get Meliusine down here quickly, though. So we'll set you up. I mean, obviously you don't have anything to hit right now, but I also don't want to play Melusine in a row by herself for the reason we just saw there. More damage on their big tactics. So now let's do this. That gets out one of the cards that we did not want to see in our hands, so that's helpful. Okay, Magni Division for a tactic of some variety. There's the assassination that we expected to see. But don't really mind losing that all that much. Let's go Messenger of the Sea here. And we'll get the rain going in both this row and this row largely just... See if I can cancel this in time. Good. Largely just because now that will get out the two anglerfish, which makes this Mask of Ouroboros much safer. Best Boy also getting summoned out, so now that is not something we need to worry about. So this is probably safe. We'll use it to get rid of a Hermit. In all likelihood. I need a vision again. Not really sure who they're going to target with that. And we might be looking to end this round fairly soon here. Let's do this. Get rid of you, and we might even play you. Yeah, it doesn't really matter which row. We would prefer if it had been that one, but so be it. And we have a pretty huge lead here, so I think we feel okay about passing. And there's enough rain here that the anglerfish should stay. So get a little more boostage on you from the rain. That, that is, once the armor goes away. We'll see if they try to catch us here. Trist Meteor Shower. Oh, okay, we did have a lot of stuff lined up there, and Melusine has a bunch of base power. So, all right, they had a finisher, but it was not enough. Oh, no. Oh, wait, no, it was <laughs> Never mind, I can do math, I swear. <laughs> Just barely enough. All right, but now we know they've lost their best, what is objectively their best card by all accounts. All right, now let's dump Nivellin. Not a huge fan of that. We don't need to be as concerned about drawing to cards that we wanted to save at this point. They did play one more card, so we might just be looking at a throwaway here, in which case having something like a seagull, a beast, to put into our graveyard is not a terrible thing. There's also potential carry over there. So do they drive past? No, it looks like they're gonna play, they do. Experimental Remedy. Give them a half room. Okay, that does remove it from our graveyard, doesn't it? Which is unfortunate. And uh, it's a little awkward. Our first turn play here might need to be Kelpie, which I don't love, because ideally, ideally you would have some more units on the board first. That way, you can more definitively establish which row you want to target. All right. And so now, I think this is Seagull O'Clock. And don't worry, 
The damage from the raid, <laughs> still enough for us to take the round two win, and we should have added a few seagulls into our graveyard as well. All right, not a huge fan of Hermit anymore. Little half through for additional rain might be better, especially when we have Fulmar. Not entirely sure if Rikusha is going to be for Melusine or if it's for the uh, Rio Gone at the end of the round, but I think we can settle for this. Maybe dump you. Ah, I should have settled. Should have settled. Got greedy there. Okay, let's start with Little Halfru. Try to get some relatively safe sources of rain before we drop the Messenger of the Sea, which we do want to do early. Gonna want to get Kraken out there fairly early as well to make sure we have enough time to work with that. Okay, who are you going for here? It is annoying that you're stealing our beasts from our graveyard, because that is something that we would like to have. Okay, uh, that's a silly one to target, but okay. It also disappeared because you had no rain. That is why it was a silly target. Okay, speaking of which... This is a throwaway. So we'll use it now. Imperial Diplomacy. Basically just waiting for you to put units on the board so we can actually hit you with rain, and then we can use this and use this. Granted, that's still not really what we're looking for just yet. We could go Corrupted Flaminica. I guess we will. Still not thrilled about it, because it does give them plenty of time to to try to answer it. How big is their enslave? Six. So we'd love to get this up immediately above six, so that it is not stealable. But that's why I didn't really want to do that, because we were inviting them to do some kind of control like that. Hermit. Not a terrible thing, though. They steal little half Halfru. All right, I mean... Oh, and Sunset Waters, I didn't even realize they had that in their hand. But now they have much more stuff in that room. Which means this might be a decent time to break you out, especially because now we don't have the worry of the leader ability coming out here. Do want to make Kraken happen very soon, though. That's very suspicious. That's extremely suspicious. Okay, let's... Fulmar. Okay, we're not going to get to choose which row. Fine, be that way. Probably would have preferred the other one, but so be it. So we're likely going to have to overwrite that rain with Storm with the Kraken. False Siri, you say? Do you have any self-damage left? Oh, another Boohoo. It's going to make it pretty hard to destroy her. But I am wondering now if perhaps we can do this. Ah, uh, no, don't do that yet. We'd like to get, ah, uh, granted we don't have any cultists next to Melusine, so yeah, we should have, in hindsight. Gonna want a Kraken now, though. Okay, fine, steal a humongous Melusine and make it so we can't prevent you from getting False Siri back, be that way. I thought it was a clever move. Yeah, as I said, gonna need to put that here anyway. And you are going to be the target for Sea Serpents, and Fulmar, unfortunately, not going to have much value out of him at this stage. Okay, I mean, that's fine. If you want to put the Sirens in that row, that is preferable. Let's target you. Get a decent boost out of it. And that storm is going to destroy Kraken. Unless they boost it up, and if they do, then we may still be able to take it out with Sea Serpent. I mean, I see why they're putting the rain here, but they're also potentially going to hit Fall Siri. They also did not play quickly enough. So that's what they get for trying to mess with our deck here. And we know that's going to get destroyed already from the storm. So we'd actually prefer to just hit something that the storm was not going to destroy. That should get you back. And I'm expecting a Kraken. Did we prevent ourselves from getting the Kraken because the Seagulls took up too much room? I mean, Messenger of the Sea, I did not even realize. This has gotten absolutely humongous in the process. And uh, they may have somehow still managed to take that turn in the last eight seconds and Rage Quit almost simultaneously. Rage Quit they did, but either way, we had the win. All right, so going up against Northern Realms here, and they'll go first. All right, and our starting hand is pretty bricked here. Don't want Roach, don't want the Angler Fish, so I think maybe we'll sell for Angler... Oh my goodness, okay, well, <laughs> round one's gonna be pretty tough here. 
This may very well be a reverse deck since they are Inspired Zeal. Unfortunately, we did not get the card Nivellin that we would have liked to counter that. So what are we looking for? I think it might just be get some beasts in our graveyard in anticipation of playing Little Hafru, or rather of uh, playing Corrupted Flaminica in a later round. And get some seagulls in there as well. That wouldn't be a terrible thing either. Though they're going to make that a little bit tougher. Let's, uh, that's maybe a little... Mm, let's go for you, I guess. Don't have enough cards in a row for that little half root to be of much use to us. Love for you to get a little bit more damage. Okay, well, on Sace. That's incredibly overly aggressive, I would think, but you do you. And as I said, really just throwing cards in here. Low priority cards on the board and not a huge deal, I don't think. Not really planning to do much in this round unless you want to do something like that, which is you know, maybe half decent to get more seagulls in our graveyard, but obviously they have a pretty big lead here, so not really looking to play much further, given how at this point we would pretty much be required to play bricks, which is obviously something that we don't really want to do. The one thing we could have considered doing would have been to at least use one leader ability charge to try to get some of those anglerfish out, because that was something that we did get rid of in our starting hands. But we kept the other bricks, but now we might still draw back into those. So that was a risk that we took. Okay. Didn't draw into any more bricks, at least not immediately. So let's try. Mulgating you guys, we did get an anglerfish back. That's unfortunate, but let's see how aggressively they try to push. How BM... Do they choose to be? No downside to uh, turn one Raging Bear, just a point slam, no self damage on deploy, so that's good. That means we do win out there. Uh, anything we actually want to put in our graveyard? No, we already have. Already have a little half roost, so no reason to throw that away. I mean, you could use it as a throwaway, I suppose, just so that you don't have it in your hand for round three. But we want to get rid of that Anglerfish, most importantly. And we definitely do still have many of our big cards in our deck, in large part because we did not get the thinning that we were hoping to get. But we have Fulmar, Meliusine, and Fukusia. That's big. Kelpie. Do we have the uh, Corrupted Flamenica as well? Yeah, you know, this hand is not bad. No Kraken is the big missing thing here, I suppose. Let's start with a little Haffer. That way we have a relatively low risk way of setting ourselves up with some rain in the near future. All right, let's get crazy in this row, though. So you have immediately made it clear where we should be setting up all of our rain. We have a Messenger of the Sea. We do not. Ooh, that's a big exclusion as well. Queen Adalia into... Did they get up to alumni range? They certainly did with their melees, bro. A little early for that. I guess we'll go here. This should get out. Banglerfish. Would like to go Seagulls pretty soon as well. Rafford's Vengeance we'd certainly like to get rid of. Kelpie. We can play pretty soon as well here, because they have a lot of stuff in that row. So let's go maybe Kelpie. Here. Now you've seen here, and then we might play Full Mar soon. Since we have a lot of rain piling up there. Oh, did they just get they did just get rid of Melusine. Alright, well fortunately, still managed to get decent value out of Melusine. Enough so that Full Mar should be pretty effective here. One would assume. So let's get him going. And I use it in this range row. I want to make sure we have enough time for you. Seagulls come out. So more seagull potential in the future. Practice makes perfect. They have played a lot of mages. Should have a lot of beasts for Corrupted Flamnica as well. Well, let's go here, I think. So we have time for that, and then we do that. It technically perhaps should have gone. The leader village... Okay, cancel, cancel, cancel. We almost almost lost the match because of that. Um, because I tried to right-click to cancel out the second charge for our leader ability. It almost hit the range row. 
and uh, would have overridden Storm with rain, which obviously would have been a very bad thing. So didn't want to see that. Okay, now it might be time for some seagulls. Get some of those guys going. Unfortunately, yeah, we actually wanted Kelpie to stay alive. Would have been perhaps worth putting it next to Hermit. But I'm thinking it's going to be Fukusia into Ryogon. And granted, we're starting to run out of board space here. And actually, not that much overkill, overinvestment from a from a storm standpoint here. We only have room for one more unit in total. That is the perhaps scariest thing, because Fukusia takes up two spots, assuming we get something out, right? But Sea Serpent is perhaps a little bit more of a point slam. Okay, I love that you did that, though. I do love that you did that. That did help quite considerably, so now we can use Fukusia. And there are some interesting options here. I think I will go Ryogon, but you could justify Melusine there, just for the point slamage. Now we have room for Sea Serpent, which should be pretty effective here. Not really concerned about Margarita's lock at this stage. And it is very tough to get so many Spellweaver charges in this event. I am not a fan of Spellweavers in this event for that very reason. They can hit yourself. So they may have a bunch of charges here, but that is a very dangerous proposition. They have a good target. I mean, they surely have someone to go after with Seltkirk, right? But it's not enough. So we will take the win. All right, so going up against Nilfgaard here. And we'll go first. And we want to put both Roach and this Anglerfish back into our deck. Okay, and this looks pretty solid. We do have a lot of cards we want to keep in our deck, so I'm not even going to use that last mulligan. Not going to attempt fate like that. Let's see. In terms of our first turn play here... We'll go a little half room. And then might discard the Hermit with our Mask of Ouroboros there, although if we can get a little more thinning first, that might be better still. Okay, that is unfortunate armor there. Let's go, I guess, Messenger of the Sea. I don't love using it before we have the immediate setup, and... I would usually a little half root proactively to set it up, but given that armor, that made matters a little more complicated. Now, suddenly, it looks much better. Looks much better for several reasons. One of which being this. The other being this. And the other being... I... Ah, oh, that's why I was saying that... It might make sense to delay a little bit before you use the stratagem, because there was a risk before thinning that we were going to end up drawing into something like that. So it was a case to be made for being a little more patient with it. Okay, and we don't have that many additional cards that we particularly like to play here at the moment. To be brutally honest with you, I'm not thrilled about playing Melusine there. But I'm also not thrilled about committing Fulmar right now either. Flaminica is not really a round one play. We probably are going to have to play Fulmar soon. That's suspicious. That's highly suspicious. Okay. As I said, it's probably going to have to be Fulmar at this point. This should make this Messenger of the Sea quite big. We'll get out this Anglerfish, although this one, we're going to Mulgan back into our deck in between rounds. They realize... They don't really want to be playing this game. We did commit pretty hard to this round using both Melusine and Fulmar, but we do win round one. All right, and we have done some thinning, so our consistency should be a little bit better here, although we do want to get rid of this Anglerfish. And we played one more card than our opponent, so we could use a throwaway here. Not really sure we have a great option, because I... Well, we already used Melusine, so I suppose we can throw away the, the, cult, the Hermit and not be too worried about using all of our cultists. You actually can make a case for throwing a uh, a beast in between rounds as a throwaway like this to set up Flaminica in a later round, but I think we did a decent job of that in round one anyway, so I'm not too concerned about that. And they technically need to play... Oh, they do have one more throwaway, so it's not a huge issue, but 
We played one more card than our opponents. Not really looking to push much in round two here. And Light Cavalry is a decent card, so not a bad thing to see them commit that. Obviously, they do have another somewhere. Presumably. So they'll win round two. All right, so Fukusia might be for Ryogan, could potentially be for Melisine, although we didn't set that up all that much. I think we don't really need Nivellin. Raging Bear could be first turn play, although that's a little bit slow when we're trying to set up all of our rain stuff. I guess we can settle for this. Yeah, not really too much that we... We still had an Anglerfish in our deck, so we need to be careful of that. Okay, so let's start with you. Again, it's, it's a little bit slow, but... It is nice to play that first so that we don't damage ourselves in the process. Okay, and then... And if you do destroy that, it's not the absolute end of the world. Let's get a half root down here. And if they do destroy a beast, then I'm going to play Corrupted Flaminica. Is basically the one thing that I'm waiting for. I'm also seeing what row they're going to play stuff in, and then we're going to break out things like Kelpie and Kraken. Which, looking like Melee Row is not a bad place to be playing those types of things. Don't really care about destroying that, as I was saying. Adding more more beasts to our graveyard is not a terrible thing. I don't remember specifically if we had a little halfer there yet or not. And I don't care too much about loading up on excessive rain in this row, because I'm basically assuming that Fukusia is going to be for Ryogun at this point. So now, it might even be a half-decent time to do that, but with decent rain setup. So we'll do this. Watch it, all the stuff that has armor. Hit one of the things that has armor, so you not as boosted as I would like you to be right now. I swear, if you can answer this because of that, I'm not going to be happy. Uh, it's almost that. Almost that way. Um, okay. Still hitting too much armor. Too much armor right now. Okay, now we have reason to go for this row, which I do like. You are an engine, so let's get you down. Let's do this as well. And we should be crackening very soon. That gets the anglerfish. We'll also get all of our seagulls out. More boosts on the Messenger of the Sea, which is definitely useful. Okay, Nazca Sergeant, decent point slam. Okay, so I think it is cracking the clock. Don't love this row, but it has less rain in it, so I'm gonna go for it. I think I go Flaminica soon, in all likelihood. They're gonna try to boost the Kraken with this? They might. They did. Okay, fair enough. Kraken might not get destroyed. But we'll go Flaminica now, probably. And now, Fukusia, there's actually not as many. Uh oh. Okay, fair enough. I mean, this Messenger of the Sea is actually going to get bigger than that, so that's a little short-sighted of them. I think we'll do this... No? Melusine into... We can actually go with another Flaminica, so we will do that. And we'll use Last Turn Rage of the... I mean, technically, that Last Turn Rage of the Sea isn't going to be a huge deal. They did Heat Wave our big Messenger of the Sea, but they aren't able to answer this, that means... I think puts us in a decent place here. This is mostly just going to be another you know, two-point unit on our side of the board. And then use you to deal damage. Not going to have enough to destroy that Kraken, but it's not going to matter. Because we still have enough points to win. So there's a look at the Skellige Rain deck for the new Battle Rush Seasonal event with new cards from the Claw and Dagger expansion. If you liked the video, then make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and leave a comment down below to let me know which other cards, archetypes, and factions we should experiment with next. And take a look at our Battle Rush playlist to see previous decks that we've used in this event as well. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you next time.